one fourth and one eighth. One fourth and one eighth. So you look at it and you say, well, what fraction can I play around with to multiply by something to give me the other guy? Well, I know that I can multiply four times two, so I'm gonna put one fourth here. Um, and if I multiply the bottom by two and the top times two, then on the bottom we're gonna have eight, four times two is eight, one times two is two. So this fraction, this two eighths fraction, it's exactly the same amount of pizza, so to speak, as the one quarter of the pizza. It represents the same thing. So if I were gonna rewrite these fractions in terms of a common denominator, it would be two eighths comma one eighth. So again, I didn't have to mess with the second fraction in this case, I left it alone, but I changed the first one. These two fractions are the same two, basically the same two fractions, the same, that represent the same exact stuff as the original two that we had. What about two thirds uh, and one twelfth? How can I do that? Actually, let me write it like this, one twelfth. I'll write it below. Okay, so I want to find a common denominator between these two fractions. Well, I know right away that I can take 3 and multiply by 4 to give me 12. So I can say 3, this is 2 thirds, right? And I can multiply by 4 on the top and the bottom, and that's going to give me on the bottom 3 times 4 is 12, 2 times 4 is 8. So this fraction 8 twelfths is exactly the same as the fraction 2 thirds. So the two fractions I started with were 8 twelfths and 1 twelfth. So these two fractions are just sort of like, I didn't really have to mess with 1 twelfth, I left him alone, but this guy we changed around into this fraction. It represents exactly the same amount of stuff, but in this case, both denominators are the same, and that's gonna let me add them or subtract them later on. So you have complete freedom. I can multiply anything I want to a fraction as long as I do it to the top and the bottom, because in that way, if I do it that way, if I multiply by the top and the bottom, then I've continued to keep the the seesaw, so to speak, balance. You can think of every fraction as a seesaw. Everything's balanced. If I multiply something by the top, I've got to do something and multiply the bottom by the same number in order to keep the seesaw balanced. Then I've done the same thing to both sides, so to speak, to both parts. All right, what if I have uh, 3 fourths and uh, 5 eighths? 3 fourths and 5 eighths. Now here, uh, we get into something a little bit more interesting because we've got 3 fourths here and 5 eighths here. Now which of these fractions? Sometimes you have to do things to both fractions, but in this case I notice I have a 4. So that's going to let me do things rapidly because I can take this and I can say, let me take 3 fourths and let me multiply that by 2 on the top and the bottom. Because 4 times 2 is 8, I'm trying to transform that denominator. 2 times 3 is 6 eighths on the bottom. So this is the fraction. I don't really have to mess with this fraction at all, so I'm just going to keep this 5 eighths. Now these two fractions have a common denominator. They represent the same amount of stuff. Okay, now what if I have, this one is the one I was looking for, 2 fifths and 3 fourths. Now we start to get into a little bit of a different class of problem. Because if you notice in all the problems before, it was easy to basically find the answer because I could take four, multiply by two to give me eight. Up here I could take three, multiply by four to give me 12. Basically in all the other examples, I only had to play around with one of the two fractions to get what I was trying to get, the common denominator. But in this case, I can't really do that because I can't take five and multiply by anything I want to give me four, it's not possible. I can't take four, multiply by whatever I want to give me five, it's really not possible. But let me show you this. If I take, let me go ahead and play with this fraction. I'm not going to try to explain it in words. I'm just going to show you. What if I take 2 fifths? What if I just decide to multiply this fraction by 4, top and bottom? And then at the same time with the other fraction, what if I take this fraction, 3 fourths, and multiply him by 5 on the top and the bottom? Now look at what I would get if I did that. 5 times 4 is 20, 4 times 5 is 20. So this top fraction would be 2 times 4 is 8, 5 times 4 is 20. Bottom fraction, 3 times 5 is 15, 4 times 5 is 20. These two fractions represent exactly the, the same amount of stuff uh, just like before. The only difference is 
So now we have a common denominator of 20. So these fractions could be added, subtracted, or whatever I wanted to do later down the road when we get there. The only real difference between this problem and the other one is that I had to do something to both fractions. And most of the time you probably will have to do something to both fractions unless it works out really easy where you can just see that you, you won't have to do that. We've done problems like that before. But most of the time what you're going to end up doing is trying to find, but what we're really doing here is finding the least common multiple between 5 and 4. And so we covered least common multiple earlier in the course, but basically all it boils down to is you're looking at 5 and 4 and you're writing the multiples and then you're finding the least common multiple. But when you're working with, with fractions, it becomes cumbersome to list them all out and do all of this stuff. You're, you're going to get comfortable with, with basically finding this common denominator without having to list the least common multiple all the time. In this case, there's no number other, the, so let me say it a different way, the number 20 is the smallest number possible that 5 and 4 can both divide into. If you think about that for a second, you'll, you'll, you'll agree with that. If you pick you know, 18, or if you pick 16, let's say, 4 can go into 16, but 5 can't go into 16. What if you pick 12? Well, 4 can go into 12, but 5 can't go into 12. Well, what if you pick you know, 17? Well, ne neither one of these numbers go into 17. What if you pick 10? Well, 5 can go into 10, but 4 can't go into 10 evenly. So the smallest number is 20. You know, 5 can go into 20, 4 can go into 20. And so a lot of times you're going to end up uh, doing that. And so we had to mess with both fractions in this case.